Hi guys, it's Alex here, and today I'm going to show you a game by Mihail Tal, nicknamed the Magician from Riga. Mihail Tal, a former world champion, was known for his tremendous attacking flair and creativity, and this game was no exception. It was played as part of a simultaneous against the little-known uh, Sviridov. Mihail Tal had the white pieces, and he started with the move pawn to e4. After pawn to c5, we have a Sicilian on the board. Knight f3, d6, and d4 marks an open Sicilian. Pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, and black plays knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4. Knight c3, developing the knight and defending the pawn. And black now plays the move pawn to g6. In this position, black has many options. For example, the most common move is a6, which is the Sicilian Nidorf defense. But with the move g6, we have the dragon variation of the Sicilian. White develops his remaining queenside minor piece, bishop e3, and supports his knight on d4, and black fianchettos his bishop. Now white fortifies the center further, in this case e4, with f3. We have the so-called Yugoslav variation against the Sicilian dragon. Black brought out his knight to c6, and white set up a queen-bishop battery, queen to d2, and white is preparing to castle queenside. Black develops his queenside pieces, bishop d7, and now white castles queenside. The idea behind uh, the way in which white is playing is that he is expecting black to castle on the king's side and white wants to push forward the g and the h pawns to create an attack against the black king's side. In particular, this pawn on g6 is an easy target because white can anchor, can latch onto this point and use it like a hook with g4, h4 and h5 Targeting this point on g6 is easier than if the pawn was back on its starting square. In order to combat this uh, way of uh, play, black must fight against the enemy king, the white king, on the queen side. So black played the move queen to a5 to try to create some threats. However, this was already a mistake. In fact, the best move here is probably rook to c8. If not rook to c8, then castle. Rook c8, and the idea is that black wants to, at some point, step the knight either to e5 or a5, and from there jump to c4, and begin an attack along the c-file and along the c4 square. With the move queen a5, however, although the queen might look like it's very aggressively placed, the pawn on a2 is well defended, and the knight on c3 is also well defended. In the meantime, the queen robs black of the possibilities like that we just mentioned with knight a5 and knight c4. So queen a5 was already a mistake. White overprotects the a2 pawn, and now black steps onto the c-file. White, even though black has not yet castled, white launches his kingside attack. Black plays pawn to h6 to prevent the move g5. The problem that black uh, had is that if he doesn't play such a move as h6, then after g5, the knight is kicked away, and then the d5 square is no longer being controlled by the knight, so white can at some point jump to this very central square in the future. So therefore, black tried to prevent this. However, this is very dangerous because suddenly we already spoke about how this pawn on g6 is a target because it advanced, and now this next pawn, the h pawn, has advanced as well, so now black has two easy targets. Notice, on the other hand, that Mihail Tal has not moved any of the pawns in front of his king on the queen side. White continues the pawn march, and black tries to do the same. 
but there is an important principle in chess. If the pawns have advanced like they have for black, the attack is, comes faster. It's easier to make contact with the enemy pawns. If the pawns have not advanced, like for white, then the attack is slower. So we have a race on our hands and black is actually going to lose this race because he has advanced his pawns and white has not. White develops his bishop and now black jumps his knight to e5, finally eyeing up the c4 square. White already crashes through with g5, hitting the knight and hitting the pawn. At this point, black should have made a sacrifice. He should have played knight h5. And after pawn takes h6, black cannot capture the pawn because white is defending it with two pieces. However, after bishop f6, this pawn is not going anywhere fast, and although black would be down a pawn, at least white's pawns are doubled and the attack has been slowed down. However, black did not want to lose a pawn, so he made the big mistake of capturing on g5. Now, after capturing on g5, the h-file has been opened. So we see that Mihail Tal is crashing through on the king side, whereas there are no open files on the queen side. Now, black compounds his first mistake and he captures this rook on h1. Black must have been expecting white to recapture on h1 and then he would move his knight. However, Tal had other ideas in mind. After rook takes h1, Tal played a brilliant move. Can you see the move? Okay, I will now show white's next move. Mihail Tal ignored the rook. He noticed that the black queen is being x-rayed by the white queen and she is undefended. And he uses this to uncork a clever tactic. He captures the knight on f6. Now, if black captures back with the bishop or with the pawn, then and only then white will take the rook and he will be up a piece. So black said, I will first take the rook with check and then I will capture the pawn. Now, if white were to capture back with any piece except the one with which Tal captured, then after bishop takes f6, we would do a material count and we would realize white has one extra minor piece, but black has a rook. So white would actually be lost in this position. But Tal's clever idea was to exploit the undefended queen. He captured back with the knight. And now, if you capture on f6 with the bishop, then black's queen will fall and black will be lost. Still, there is one more subtle point to Tal's creative, uh, to Tal's creative tactic. Black can first capture the queen and only after bishop takes queen, now black can recapture and once again, black would be up a rook for just one minor piece and he would be winning. However, Tal had seen further and in this position, Tal plays pawn takes g7, ignoring the black queen. And here, Spiridov realized the difficult situation that he was facing. He can save his queen, but the pawn on g7 will promote on the next move to a queen and deliver checkmate. And even if he decided to forget about his queen, even then the pawn cannot be stopped. So, for example, black could 
take a piece with check, and after bishop takes d1, black still has two minor pieces and a rook against three minor pieces. He is still up the exchange. But the problem is that the way black's pieces are, this pawn on g7 cannot be stopped from promoting to a queen. And so, in this position, Sviridov understood there was nothing to do, and he resigned. This was, I think, a beautiful game, one of many beautiful, creative games by the magician from Riga, Mihail Tao. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in another Master Game in the future.